Hello everyone, this is chapter one, part two of labor economics. I'm back, Dr. G. And in this part, we'll talk about why use economic theory. I'm actually going to give you an example. And also, we'll talk about, we'll learn about the definitions of positive and normative economics. So, we use theory and why? Why do we need theories? Why can't we just observe the, empir the world and get the empirical result? So, theory gives us a way to explain and understand how labor markets work. So we don't need to observe it. Once we know what the theory says, we know what's expected. Of course, sometimes our predictions do not meet the reality and we'll talk about that as well. And in theory, we focus on essential variables. So this is a Keter's purpose assumption that you have probably heard about in the principles of economics courses. Keter's purpose means holding everything else constant so we focus on the essential variables leaving all other less crucial factors out okay so we try to create a model that helps explain the theory so for instance when you're driving let's say to a, a to a new store right you put the directions on your cell phone gps google maps it doesn't just it tells you turn right, turn left, take this exit. It doesn't tell you, oh, look, there's a school on the left. Oh, look, there's a puppy running. Okay, You don't see those kind of irrelevant, less crucial factors. Okay, So let's learn about positive versus normative economics. So positive economics addresses facts, focuses on what is. Example. Uh, is, for instance, stating an economic fact. For instance, you can say unemployment rate was 3.4% three months ago. That's an, if it's a fact, then it is a positive economic statement, right? Questions answered with the tools of econo uh, economics, labor economics. So an example of a positive statement is for instance, federal minimum wage is $7.25 per hour. This is a fact. Or minimum uh, wage rate is $15.50 uh, in California at the moment. That's a fact. Positive economics, economic facts. Normative economics addresses values. It adds value judgments, okay? Focuses on what should be. And requires judgments. So an example of a normative statement is federal minimum wage is at 725 per hour is too low. It should be higher. So this is what ought to be normative economic statement. Positive economic states the fact. Okay, just keep that in mind. So I'm going to show you a very quick example of I really like this. How economic models work. This is the Alaskan labor market and, and construction of the oil pipeline. So in Alaska, Prudhoe Bay. Prudhoe Bay. Okay, so they discovered, this is in northern Alaska. In 1968, they discovered 10 billion barrels of oil. This is a remote, frigid area. They wanted to build a 789 mile pipeline. Okay, so this is part of the Valdez pipeline. Okay, project began in 74. So 74 to 1979, they hired 50,000, I'm gonna put out labor. Okay, so earnings dollars on the y axis, employment. This you can interpret that this as number of workers this is the supply labor supply curve these are the labor demand curve so initially let's say we're at point a okay before this was discovered so labor demand curve initial labor demand curve and initial labor supply curve i'm going to grab a different color initial labor supply curve intersect we're at point a this is the wage rate right and these are the number of people employed in the northern Alaskan area. So once you hire 50,000 people, this is a shift 
outward, outward shift in demand curve. I said it in a weird way. But demand increases, demand for labor increases from what? From D0 to D1, D0 to D1. So what does that even mean? So let me show you. So the initial intersection goes from here to intersection of these two guys. So now you're looking at a new equilibrium. Let's grab a different color, blue. Okay, so you don't have D0 no more. D1, the S0 intersection. Equilibrium moves to point B from A. So what changes? Look at this. Wage rate has gone up. Real wages have... You expect real wages to go up between 74, 79. And employment number of people hired goes up as well in that time period. And let's see the graph. So this is the wages and employment in the Alaskan labor market between 68, 84. Okay. So employment is the number of people employed here, right? Thousands, tens of thousands of people. This is the monthly salary. These are the real wages. Okay. So this is the timeline, time period, 68. So check this out. Once the construction starts, I'm going to go highlight it. Once the construction starts, 74, 79 especially, right? This window. Employment goes up, guys. So employment is a black line. Employment goes up by a lot, right? And then also wages, the blue line. Wages go up, real wages. However, it stabilizes. Why? Because... Employment goes up, wages go up in this period, right? And what happened is that once the construction is completed after 79, the construction was completed right here. So now they kept maintenance level workers, okay? Real wages, their real wages went back to normal, right? A little bit higher than previous. Real wages went back to normal. Employment also went back to the population growth because look at this bl black line right employment always goes up a little bit let me grab a different color employment is going to go up but here there was a huge spike and again it's going to go up by the population so this was an example of how economic theory is useful in explaining even a simple labor market phenomenon okay so this chapter in a nutshell, labor economics studies how labor markets work. Models, we use economic models. Models in labor economics typically contain three actors. You have workers, firms, and government. A good theory should have realistic assumptions. And also, we can test them with real-world data, just like that Alaskan pipeline project example. And the tools of economics are helpful in answering positive questions. So in this course, we will focus on positive economics, describing the markets. I'm not going to try to tell you, oh, this is how it should be, this and that. No, we're going to focus on facts and we're going to answer positive economic questions. So that's it. I'll see you in part three. Part three is regression analysis this is an introduction we're going to cover this in a little different way stay tuned <laughs>